<laughs> Claude, you can also like move to sandwich him so he doesn't yeah. can't easily get away. Oh, you, you move around to sandwich him. Don't let him make you move. Yeah, I did. You flank him, not the other way around. Elbows down. Elbows down. Elbows down. Okay. Get out. Time. Let's see. So it's not like, mm, and then my hands out here, and then I'm trying to do that. Like he'll he'll sense it. Like he may just tighten up and brace for it if he can't move. You know, if he can't avoid it. So I'm trying to let him run into it. Bam. On this one, step out and guide this down. Right. So I'm not pulling or anything. I'm just. Here and then the thermal kind of hook, you just parry and just let it run into your fist. So basically, you're doing the same thing twice, right? You leave this in the space, ah, right? Ah, leave it in the space. That's a little poor on my part. And it's not much. <laughs> Especially if you don't. Like, what Sensei was saying is it's a, uh, it's like the razor's edge between self-defense and violence, right? So, so one, two. If I go here, right, and I go boom, that's like on the side of violence. I'm trying to hit him instead of just protecting myself. So. If you just protect yourself, like it's less for him to read because he doesn't sense as much counterattacking intention. Right? Like oh. just oh, you want to keep attacking? I'll put that in the way while I skate. Almost. Okay. So tap into that extra thirty percent that we always have in reserve. Right? Like you, you. Train it like 20%, you fight it 70%. You, occasionally you go 100%, right? 
So, if you've got someone who's big, 70% may not be enough. Right? So you have to get a little more. So you tap into your reserve, right? Uh, just for fun. So you check. As the same one comes in, like I, I realize he's a lot bigger than me. So I do give just a little bit extra. Because <clears throat> I need him to pause. Otherwise, that third one's not going to work. Boom, I'm trying to buy myself just a moment of time and get the distance where he has to take a step. Boom. And it's not the arm, it's, it's the hips and shoulders, right? As you escape. So, uh, like even on the points where you're like guiding the hand down, you have to get a pause out of it. So that's the hard part of training, right? Either you can agree that the UK will pause to preserve his ribs, because so he doesn't have to get hit hard every every rep, or you just hit each other hard every rep, right? So I'll, I'll attack. So let's say he doesn't hit me hard, and I'm not being conscious about how to train to allow him to practice, right? I do this, boom, and or sorry. <laughs> He'll never have a chance because he's not actually hitting me. And I'm still moving as if, like, I can do what I want. This time I actually hit him. Yeah, it causes a little bit of a pause for a moment because, like, one, it stops my, my momentum. And also, it hurts a little bit. Right? But at the same time, like, just throwing your fist in that space isn't enough. You've got to hit the Q show, you have to hit the points. That way you can maximize your, you know, uh, maximize the efficiency of the strike. If it's just kind of thrown in there haphazardly, you have a less chance of it working. So you have to hit points. Enough that, like, it'll stop them. Even that last one was a little off. Like, I want to hit with, with like a single knuckle almost, right, on a single point, rather than just the whole hand in the general area, right? especially if you're smaller, like smaller than the opponent, then you have to. If you just try to like out-club each other, rock and sock and robots, the bigger guy will win, right, okay. So you check. It's just enough to not like get hit, but it's not like really avoiding or not over avoiding you're just moving just enough to not get hit boom and it's not like don't get too caught up in touching his his hand this is just a guard just in case right boom that allows your shoulders to be in position to maximize your reach like if you're if you're kind of intent on touching like your shoulder tends to pull in which takes the shoulder back which takes the fist away so I want to be here, right? Same thing on that one. So that's like the difficult part. The reason your hand is up there for the parry, like, so one, two, so, uh, <clears throat> is just in case this is not really at all that straight. And I had that hand either to it doesn't have to be a big like looping thing, it just be like a semicircle, right? And I'm like, just in case I needed it, right? So it's a backup plan. Like you can't you can't move in such a way that you trust that the person knows how to punch straight every time. You know, if they're you know drunk or something, they may be sloppy and not having as much motor control. Or as they're punching, they just slip on the ground and it throws their punch off. So you can't like you have to be real careful about maybe just a single one, straight, stuff like that, where you don't put any guard on. Now you have to be able to read it really well, always punch it straight, and then you do some crazy stuff. But I don't trust that. Like if it happens, then it happens. But I would rather have insurance. So <clears throat> one of the keys, like his, so like he's coming at me with three punches, right? One of the ways to make this easier for yourself is once he throws the first punch, you don't worry about that anymore. 
right? Now it's, at this point, I didn't get hit. Like, that's one of the reasons you check. One, it's to get a sense of his timing and distance, but it's also to confirm to your body that you did not get hit, which frees up your mind to worry about the next thing. So if he's in this position, where's the next attack coming from? You know, that's something to try to read. But because I've given myself this distance, it also gives me a little extra time to react if I need it. Sometimes you can sense his intent, right? That he's gonna punch me there. And so that makes it easier. So again, this is like, I didn't get hit. Where's the next one coming from? Right? Boom. Even now, where's the next one coming from? So you, it takes a lot of practice. And not that I've gotten that good yet. But I have to consciously always, like you have to consciously work on it for it to actually become a skill. Like you just think, oh yeah, I know where the next one's coming from, but you don't actually practice knowing where the next one's coming from, then you won't develop that skill. So that's why it's important to like start slowly to learn the steps. Once you have the steps dialed in, then you can start adding speed. And then you can get to the point where you're not really looking directly at it. Right? Which will help you. So makes it actually easier because I'm not <clears throat> trapped by the chaos coming at me. Like when your eyes see something, they tend to track it naturally, right? So if I see him like throwing a bunch of punches and I'm trying to track each one, that's really tough. You just have to have a sense of not getting hit. Right? A sense of where the next attack is coming from. It's not easy. <laughs> Simple, but it's not it's easy. easy. <laughs> So, a uh, couple more times, but try to get a sense of where that next one is coming from. So that you'll be a step ahead of the opponent. Right. Check. Uh, and then control with the elbow. Right. Oh, I did that wrong. <laughs> Try it again. See, I can screw up too. And then, like, like either you can grab the clothing, or if he doesn't have it, just maybe you can even coach you. But like, you have to put it up. Like, you can't put it on and then wait and then hit, because he'll react off this too soon. So. It's just before you hit. <laughs> yeah. Alright, try that. So that's rude. This is the this is like, so one, two, this is a selfie. Alright, so put it like you're in kind of close when you hit. Sorry, I should be hitting there. Like as you open up, get some space to hit again, but you know that, so you as soon as you realize he's going for a punch like because you open it up and you take it away and you you open up and you close back just like the impression is i'm i'm moving away which you know i am i am giving that space for him to hit but then i'm hitting him so try that so first one second one all right third one here. And then, whoa. <laughs> whoa. I did that poorly, actually. <laughs> Check. Hit. Boom. So you're, you're coming off this way, right? Open up for the parry. And then the hand. Thank you.